Hello world, Scott here with another video regarding Prusa Slicer. Prusa Slicer 2.4 just launched a few days before Christmas in 2021. This marks one of the biggest updates that Prusa has brought to Prusa Slicer with some really advanced features. And with that, I'm working on a series of comprehensive videos to really dig deep and show the power of Prusa Slicer 2.4 and how it can be leveraged for any printer, not necessarily just printers made by Prusa Research. But while I'm working on that, I wanted to share a little tip with you regarding a project that I'm currently working on right now. I have this fairly simple little arrowhead shape that I designed in Fusion 360, and it has curves on all the sides except for the bottom. And because of the way it's going to print, I really need for it to print upright like this. So if we bring this into Prusa Slicer and we just say to say, put supports everywhere, we're gonna get a lot of extra supports up in some areas that are gonna be kind of tricky. And then some of the areas where I really don't need them and they're gonna come around the sides and it's, it's just way more than we need. If we look over our legend, we can see that 15% of our print time is just spent on these supports. So, we could simplify this by going ahead and just saying on the build plate, and that helps. That drops our supports only now to five minutes, but I don't really need supports up in here, and I could change my angle to cut down on that. But I also can tell you, because I have printed this already a few times, that these support structures down in here get really flimsy. And when I come in and start dropping this piece right here onto these, I was getting a failure rate of about 25%. 25% uh, of the time, this piece here was coming loose, it was falling off, and the prints were failing. So I came up with kind of an ingenious way, I think, to work around this. So back in Fusion 360, what I did was I came in and I added to purposefully design support structures to sit in here underneath exactly where I need to support, which really is just this little area right here. I've got near 45 degree angles coming off on all my other sides off of these points. So I really don't need a lot of support there. But what I really do is I need to have these support structures underneath of here print solid and reliably every single time. So by building in an actual geometry for that, I can print these as solid boxes that are going to be very secure and provide just a little platform. So the only place I really need to provide support is between this platform and this point. First thing I'm going to do though, is I'm going to export out this mesh, but I'm going to use a 3MF file instead of an STL file, because that gives me a very distinct advantage when I bring it back into Prusa Slicer. 3MF files, have the ability to save multiple parts and pieces individually inside the file. If we had saved this file as an STL file, my supports and my arrow would have come in as one file. But Prusa Slicer realizes this when we save this out as a 3MF file and it lets us bring them in as single parts. So when we do that, we get our body and our supports individually cool thing about this is we can now address each one of these individually. So the first thing we can do is I can go ahead and have my, if we slice this, I've got infill inside my arrow. I've also got infill inside these supports, but their geometry is so simple, I really don't need them there. So we've also got other supports on there on top of supports. So let's go in and first off, let's turn off our supports to none. And we're gonna address these individual supports. So we're gonna go over here and right click. I'm gonna change the infill to zero. Now when we slice, we can see we only have infill inside of our arrowhead. And a nice bonus is we shave two minutes off of our print time by doing that. Now, let's go in and do our supports where we need them. So, great feature of Prusa Slicer is we have the ability now to paint on supports. 
So I'm gonna click this, I'm gonna get a little brush. I'm gonna change this down real small because I don't need a very big brush. And I'm really only worried about this area right about like this. And if we slice that, we can see we have to change this to say for support enforcers only. And now we can see we've just got support right here. We've got one layer support and then a couple interface layers. And if we come over to our other side, we do the same thing. It's a little tricky sometimes getting in here where you need to be. Change our view to make sure we're getting exactly where we need to be. And slice, and we can see now we have a little pad of support right there as well. So now our support time is 10 seconds. Well, okay, we'll combine the two of them together. 28 seconds of support time is now spent on this model. And we're at 51 minutes for the entire model. And this increased my success rate by at least another 10 to 15%. But I was still getting about a 10% failure rate when I was doing this. And the problem was, while these structures down the bottom are rock solid, right here, this little piece here would sit there and rock and eventually fall off. So I had another little hack that I did to fix that. A nifty little feature of Prusa Slicer is the ability to add parts. So we're gonna add a box and I'm going to make this box 0.4 millimeters high because that's two layer heights. I'm going to make it one millimeter wide because that's basically the length of my or width of my nozzle going out and back. And this will make sense here in a second. And I'm going to make it eight millimeters wide. Now I'm going to take this box and slide it in. So that it just disappears inside this point. And I know for a fact I'm going to need two of them because I've already printed this and this is how I'm telling you how I solve my problem. So I can come up here and I can do a copy paste and that's going to give me another generic box. So I drag one over here to the edge and I grab the other one and I drag it over to this edge. And we can see we build up our structure, we put in our, in our support bed, and this first piece right here, this is the first bottom edge um, of that outside uh, overhang of the arrowhead, now actually comes in, and we can visualize this now uh, in Prusa Slicer. It's gonna come out and draw a box that anchors the main part of the arrowhead with the support side of the arrowhead. So we've now linked the two of these. And then it's going to do another one on the next layer up on top of it. And now it's going to build them out. And what I found was when I did this little bitty trick right here by adding these two little bars, my failure rate, as much as I hesitate to say it, is 0%. I have now printed over 100 of these, and I have not had a failure with these little islands out here coming loose from the print. This little support structure right here, these two little bitty layers, roughly 0.4 millimeters high and a millimeter wide, was enough to stabilize this so it could get up here and make this arch here. And it works. And it added no time to my print. And these little pieces right here are so fine that I can take an X-Acto knife and I can easily just pop them right out and you never knew they were there. And then this little bitty bed right here, this minimal contact area between my support structure, my big support structure here and my arrow here, these just pop right off. And when my prints are done, I can grab the top part of the arrowhead, I give it a twist and it pops free, leaving these little towers on the bed. No cleanup. These are super clean and I'm printing these in PETG right now. And all I have to do is come in with my knife, pop these two out on here. So it's like two little cuts here, two little cuts here, here and here. 
takes about 15 seconds um, and these things are ready to go and look fantastic. Now, there is one other thing that I've done when I'm actually printing these. And when I first was setting these up, I was having some issues with these little islands coming loose. I've actually fixed that problem now, but I'm still using the fix right now for a different reason. And I'll show you what I did there. I came in and I added another box. And actually I added uh, four boxes, but let's do the first one here first. So it was 0.4 millimeters high. I click this little drop down right here. We drop that down onto the bed and I made it 10 millimeters wide here. I slid this box underneath there and then I copied and pasted it and I put another one over here. And then I pasted it again and I made it wider and narrower. And I drag it right there. And then I did the same thing and I put another one over here. So what I did was I created a base that tied both of these pillars together and gave them a lot more bite onto my bed and we're a lot less likely for them to come loose. So here's our finished print. You can see that base we was talking about down the bottom connects these two pillars together. And our only little interface material here for our supports is right in here and you can see it's really clean. And here's our two little cross braces there that we put to tie in our base of this overhang and our arrowhead. So like I said, this pops out super easy. Leaves a lot of our material there. I got just a little bit right here. I could pull right off. And this is printed in IC3D's Recycled PETG. Supports in PETG are possible. They're a little trickier, but it's all in your slicer settings. Also, eliminating how much support there obviously helps a lot as well. So, I mentioned that I really didn't need this base piece down here attaching these two pillars because I figured out in my settings how to get these to stick all by themselves. But I left them because removing PETG off of this PEI bed was super easy by just giving this a snap and pulls it off. So that's why I went ahead and left that on there. So here's our finished part all cleaned up. I've taken the X-Acto knife and I've cut out those little bitty spurs that were holding those two pieces together and just a couple little flicks across where the support material made contact. There's no elephant's foot on this. Got a nice smooth surface. That's all that was holding it down to the build plate. This was printed with PETG and it came out fantastic. I'm hoping that this video might give you a few ideas about how you can think about supports a little bit differently. You aren't constrained to just using the settings that are in your slicer. You can add your own structures so you don't have to rely entirely on building massive supports inside of the slicer. Sometimes when we build these big support structures out of rectilinear or back and forth, you know, whatever support pattern there is, they can get really delicate. Uh, they're designed to come off easy, but we only really need to worry about the delicate part being where it contacts our part. We don't need the entire structure that way, which often can lead to failures. Now, I know I'm going to get some comments. I'm sure some people are going to say, tree supports, tree supports. Tree supports work fine too, and they have their place. Prusa Slicer doesn't yet have tree supports in it. I have played with them in Cura, and Prusa does have them in their list of things that they're going to be adding shortly. They've actually already forked some of the code that was shared with them from the Cura team, open source at its finest. Things have gone from Prusa Slicer to Cura this as well the same way. But they will have we will have tree supports in Prusa Slicer at some point. I played with tree supports some. They have their place. But in this case, I think building that solid tower with just a little bit of interface material between the two 
is the way to go for this particular part. Now, every model is different, and that's why it's important to think outside of the box and not constrain yourself to what you've done in the past or just what's in the slicer. You need to think about each model independently and approach it with fresh eyes and fresh thinking so that you can provide the best settings for that individual model. I hope this is really helpful. Thank you for sticking around to the end. If you want to harp on tree supports and tell me that I'm doing it wrong, by all means, hit me up on Twitter, leave me a comment. I'd also really like to hear some ways that you have overcome some difficult support issues or maybe even a model that you're having some difficulty with slicing and getting supports were working as well. I'm planning on putting out more videos on slicing and Prusa Slicer. And again, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, I am planning on putting out a full in-depth dive into Prusa Slicer 2.4 now that it's available because it is awesome. Thank you again. See you soon.